So, without derivation, the simplest relation for a Newtonian fluid is given here. The normal stresses here, sigma xx, sigma yy, sigma zz, have the pressure which is compressive, so minus p, and any normal strains that normal uh, strains that you might get in that control volume as well. The shear stresses are given by the strain rates in the other directions in order to get those shear stresses. And so we're going to substitute these in and we're also going to take the density to be a constant. You'll see where that impacts the equations in order to progress in our derivation. So here we are, there's the x component of our momentum equation, the inertia force here, the body force here, and the stresses times the areas on this, on this side here. And we're going to sub in that definition of a Newtonian fluid. Having done that, we see that from the normal stresses here, the definition of the normal stress, we get the pressure, and of course we're taking a gradient of it, so we get the derivative of the pressure, and we also get this term here, the derivative with respect to x, of this strain rate here, and the definition of the yx shear stress gives us the derivative with respect to y of this term, and this one here gives us the derivative with respect to z of this term. Now we can rearrange this. Collecting like terms, we find this form here, and you might notice that this term here is conservation of mass for an incompressible fluid, and that means that that term is exactly zero. And so all of those terms will cancel out, and we can simplify our equation. Finally, we get this form of the equation with the inertia force here, the gravitational force, or the body force, the pressure forces, and the viscous forces. So now we have the singular form of Vpigs. We have no term in here for surface tension forces, though we could add that if we had a problem where we wanted to do that, which we're not going to do in this course. So that is our x component of momentum. We can simplify it a little bit further by noticing that we actually have derivative with respect to y, and derivative with respect to y, derivative with respect to z, and derivative with respect to z, and derivative with respect to x, derivative with respect to x. And if the viscosity is constant, we can pull that out of all of these derivatives and make these into second derivatives. And that's what we've done in this final form here, simply pulling that viscosity out with the additional assumption that the viscosity is constant. And so here is our final equation uh, for the conservation of x momentum, Newton's second law. And from that, we can look at the parallels and write out what the y component is. Of course, remember in the acceleration, we these terms came from the fact that our momentum was taking the mass flow times the u component of the velocity. So when we go to the y component, these are going to be replaced by v's. This uvw came from the definition of the material derivative, so that uvw is going to stay there, but these u's are going to turn to v's. Likewise, our pressure force will be now on the y faces, and so we'll get the dpdy instead of a dpdx. Our gravitational force will be the y component of the acceleration due to gravity. And again, in here, we will have the v component of the momentum, because if we went through that same derivation with this, all of those momentum terms would be the mass flow rate times the v's, and that would put the v's here. And likewise for the z component, the forces in the z component, all of those same u's that turn into v's are going to turn into w's. We're going to get the pressure gradient with respect to z, the z component of the acceleration due to gravity and the gravitational force, and in the viscous force we'll get the second derivatives of the w's with respect to x, y, and z. We can also collapse this into a very convenient and compact vector notation, where we've seen uh, this part of it before, but that uh, nabla operator comes up again here. Uh, we have the nice rho times the acceleration due to gravity vector in the gravity force, we have the gradient operator of the pressure, which you can see the gradient operator then is going to mean that I have a dp dx in the i direction, a dp dy in the j direction, and a dp dz in the k direction. And then we have a new operator here, the Laplacian, this nabla squared, which is of course exactly these terms in each of the i, j, and k directions. That's a much more compact form. And in addition, the vector format is useful because if I wanted to solve this in cylindrical coordinates, for example, all I need to do is look up the definition of these operators in cylindrical coordinates, and I could write out the component form in cylindrical or spherical or whatever coordinates I wanted to have.
So there's our vector format of the Navier-Stokes equations. And, of course, I could simplify that if I wanted to by writing this term as the material derivative, and then it starts to look a lot more, again, like your Newton's second law that we started with. We have each of the very clearly identifiable forces here, gravitational force, pressure force, viscous force, and we have the mass times the material derivative, the time rate of change of the velocity. We can make that into slightly alternate forms. The physical meaning that we see is slightly diluted when we do that, but you'll often come across these, so let me show that. The first thing that you would do is, is that you could do is perhaps divide by the density here, which means that instead of having the inertia force here, we have just the acceleration, only the acceleration term. And then we have our forces per unit mass because we've divided through by the density. And you'll notice that mu over rho the dynamic viscosity divided by the density is the definition of the kinematic viscosity, so you'll very often see this written this way with the kinematic viscosity here as well. So those forms you may see, but as I say, the, the physical meaning of this being the inertia force or the change in momentum being equal to the sum of the forces on the control volume is slightly diluted in those forms. And so let's never forget, I've said it many times, but here it is written out again, this is the rate of change of momentum per unit volume, and in terms of our V pigs, this is the I term, this is the viscous force, the V term, here is of course our pressure forces, the P term, and there's the G in V pigs. So we have all four of those, we do not have the S uh, in this expression here, and of course if we want to make simplifications and neglect viscous forces, we can cancel out this term, if we want to neglect body forces, we can cancel out this term and carry on and solve our equations. The full set of equations, I'll write it out again in, in Cartesian component form, I'm writing it out here again. Let's do that again just to make that perfectly clear. There's our I term in our V pigs, there's our G term in our V pigs, there's our P term, and finally our v term. But you'll notice in these equations there are now four variables. We have the u, v, and w, at w component of the velocity. The acceleration due to gravity, of course, is a known quantity. The density will be a known quantity for our choice of fluids, but we don't know the pressure. So the pressure field is another variable here. Then, of course, we have derivatives of u, v, and w, which if we know u, v, and w, we can evaluate those. So we need a fourth equation, but fortunately we've already derived that, and so we add the fourth partial differential equation here, the conservation of mass equation, and I've jumped right to the fact that this is a constant viscosity, constant density, incompressible. So in terms of this equation, it's a constant density form, but in these equations up here, we have made all of these assumptions, constant viscosity, constant density, and that the fluid behaves as a Newtonian fluid. And we end up with these four coupled equations, four coupled nonlinear partial differential equations. It's nonlinear because of this inertial term where we have velocities multiplying uh, gradients of velocity, so it's a second order equation. Um, it's a nonlinear equation, and we have second derivatives in the viscous terms, which makes it a second order uh, nonlinear set of partial differential equations. And these are the equations that are solved in our computational fluid dynamics codes, and we're going to look at some analytic solutions to these as well that will give us some very useful insight into the behavior of fluids and some good motivation for other parts of the course. Thanks very much.